once used to stay in the Isle of Wight at Freshwater um, with Julia Margaret Cameron, the famous uh, pioneer photographer. Uh, he was a friend of the whole family. Uh, he knew them all, he painted them all, um, and he eventually built a house himself in 1874 at Freshwater called the Briery. But he found he was too out of touch down there, so he came back to London and built a large house in Kensington instead. But when staying there in 1870, he met a rather shy but charming young girl called Miss Mary Fraser Teitler. And she records in her diary for September 1870. Today I met a painter called Mr. Watts. I think he will do great things. Whether she had any idea that 16 years later she would be the second Mrs. Watts, uh, we don't know. Whether she ever wished to be the second Mrs. Watts, we don't know. And then he had his, his exhibition at the Grosvenor Gallery in 1884-85. And Mary went to see it. He was away, otherwise he would have taken her on a personally conducted tour, but she went on her own and she was quite overwhelmed by what she saw. And she wrote to him afterwards and said, I so much enjoyed your exhibition at the Grosvenor. It is curious that when I stand beside the works of great artists, I am sometimes uplifted, I'm sometimes amused, I'm sometimes irritated. But when I look at your pictures, I always feel better. Well, yes, you can see <laughs> we're on the beginning of a long path. It in fact took her several more years before she was able to become the second Mrs. Watts. You can quite see that Watts was once bitten twice shy and poor Mary had a long uphill struggle to actually get him in the bag. But she knew that she was just what he needed. The one thing that Watts could never ever say is that my wife doesn't understand me because she was an artist too. She was also an artist's wife and she does record the occasional one-liner in her diaries where it simply says, it is not easy being an artist's wife. They had been on honeymoon to Egypt, where they went up the Nile, courtesy Thomas Cook, and she had been enthralled with the, the uh, ancient designs that she saw in, in the tombs and the museums there, and she noted many of them down. She continued her researches at the British Museum when she came back. Um, it all culminated in the astonishing cemetery chapel here at Campton, which she designed and which was built by the village builders. And when the shell of the building was complete, she trained people from the village who were interested in helping her to model in terracotta. And they, they to her designs, decorated the exterior of the building and then she took the best of the people from that school uh, who were able to help her and they decorated the inside. It is one of the most astonishing buildings in the whole of England. Watts was interviewed only a few months before he died um, and the inevitable question came up, what about the chapel? And he said, no, no, no. The chapel is my wife's work. She has a positive genius for symbolic decoration. She designed it. She and the villagers decorated it. I simply put up the money. It is an astonishing building. It stands down in the cemetery on a green Surrey hillside. As Wilfred Blunt once said, looking rather like a red London bus that somehow strayed down the country lane. It is bright terracotta in colour, 
Poor Mary always hoped that it would mellow a little, but it never has. It remains as bright and fresh today as the day when the building was finished 106, seven years ago. One wonders slightly about the inside when looking at the outside. It's such an extraordinary piece of work, but absolutely nothing prepares one for the shock of entering it. It is like being in some fantastic bubble. It, when, when, uh, when one has recovered a little from the initial shock, uh, it, it becomes obvious that it's a repeating motif around the building. But the overwhelming effect of it on entering is, is prodigious. People <laughs> go into it and simply stop dead and say, good heavens, good gracious, good Lord. A friend of mine I took there many years ago who loathes everything Victorian despite my occasional attempts to lead him down the primrose path of Victoriana, stopped dead when I took him there and said, good heavens, I think this really transcends questions of mere taste, does it not? And that, I think, is one of the best descriptions of it. <laughs>